I had never seen the region as boiling, as implosive, as angry. There is so much hatred, there is so much rage, there is so much anger against both Israel and the United States. My fear is that Gaza could easily become a time bomb that really implodes regional stability. I cannot tell you the extent of popular anger and resentment and rage can, against the United States. Can I ask you, how is it that this catastrophe was able to happen? Is there, I mean, obviously Hamas committed it, Look, but did the US take its eye off let, the ball? Let, let, me, let me be direct. Biden's foreign policy does not differ very much from Trump's foreign policy. For the past two years, this administration has not made any major investment in either trying to stop the building of Jewish settlements or even to try to really bring about the establishment of a Palestinian state. It pays lip service to the idea of a two-state solution. What did the Biden administration do in the past one year? It has tried to build up on Trump's deal of the century, bring about normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel. And why? Because in the, in the back of the mind of the Biden administration and the Netanyahu government. Mm -hmm. Normalization with Saudi Arabia would mean the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict. The underlying idea in the administration, in the Biden administration and Benjamin Netanyahu is that the Palestinians can be managed, the Palestinians can be controlled, the Palestinians can be subjugated. Why should we invest mm -hmm. in the peace process? Has Hamas not put itself out of the calling, out of the bidding? The Palestinians want dignity. The Palestinians want emancipation. The Palestinians want the end of Israeli occupation. If you ask me now who speaks for the Palestinians, mm -hmm. it's sad to say it. Hamas now speaks for the Palestinians. Still. Hamas now is the speaks for Palestinians' aspiration 